You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who Art Ed? Try to spice it. Who Art Ed? Mr. Wood, Art Ed, me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. I thought it's a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby was born August 28th, 1917. He grew up in New York City. His parents were immigrants. His dad worked in a garment factory. And in the early 20th century, factory work was extremely difficult, sometimes dangerous, and not particularly well-paying. Growing up, Kirby, or I guess Kurtzberg at that stage, dreamed of one day using his talent for drawing to get out of that small New York City apartment. Like a lot of kids, he learned to draw by tracing the figures in his favorite comic strips. One of his early influences was Rollin Kirby, a political cartoonist, who would later receive the Pulitzer Prize for political cartooning. At age 14, Kirby enrolled in Pratt. He later said he wasn't the kind of student Pratt was interested in, though. They wanted people to work on their projects forever, and he didn't want to do anything forever. He wanted to get things done. Throughout his career, Kirby was noted to be a very fast worker. He would put out about five pages a day while most other comics were doing like one to three. In the mid to late 1930s, he started work in a newspaper and then an animation studio. He was what's called an in-betweener, basically doing the tedious work of making the frames that go in between major points to smooth out the motion. In 1940, he starts working with Joe Simon, another legend of the field. The two of them worked together to create Captain America. In 1940, the U.S. was not yet a participant in World War II. And yet Jack Kirby drew Captain America taking on Adolf Hitler. He showed his comic book hero punching a real-life world leader in the jaw. This was a bold and dangerous move. I mean, Kirby literally received threats over that. Of course, It wouldn't be long before the U.S. entered World War II, and Jack Kirby, like so many other men his age, was drafted. I've done other episodes on things like Dazzle Camouflage. I've talked about the Ghost Army. Artists took on some interesting roles in the U.S. military. Jack Kirby wasn't one of the lucky ones, though. He was deep in the thick of things. He spent quite a bit of time in foxholes. His commanding officer, though realized that Jack Kirby had a talent most artists didn't, and so they utilized him for scouting missions. He would be sent out ahead to do dangerous work, scouting locations, and he would draw maps and other pictures to give the rest of his platoon information about what the terrain had lying ahead. It was in the foxholes, though, with explosions and smoke all around him, that Jack Kirby said he developed his signature Kirby Crackle, the artistic style of these fragmented images showing smoke and haze, trying to visualize the invisible forces like energy radiating around figures. When interviewed about his time in the military, Jack Kirby has been known to say that the fictional Captain America really saved his life. As Kirby tells it, his platoon was trapped in a firefight on a riverbank. There was one boat available, and that was for his commanding officer to use to escape. But Kirby says he drew Captain America, and the commanding officer let him take the boat to safety. Sadly, the rest of his platoon was lost. As with so many great stories, it's always hard to tell what exactly is fact in there. But we definitely know Kirby saw some action in World War II. After the war, he came back and again partnered with Joe Simon. He was basically all over the scene at this time. The whole comics industry was in its infancy in a lot of ways. Companies were springing up and going under or morphing into other companies, and it seems like Jack Kirby was basically working with or helped to create almost all of them. Kirby experimented with some interesting genres. 
In addition to the traditional superhero comics, he created romance comics. He created foxhole comics. He was one of the few people who realized that comic books, graphic novels, could have a wider audience than 10-year-old boys. Now, when we think of the golden age of comics, Jack Kirby had his hand in a lot of it. He helped to create the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, Iron Man, Black Panther, the Incredible Hulk. He basically populated the Marvel Universe. In 1970, though, he felt like he wasn't getting the credit he deserved there. He left Marvel for DC. There, he created a series, Fourth World, which I imagine he thought would demonstrate his brilliance and make Marvel wish they hadn't blown it with him. So maybe it wasn't the great I told you so he likely envisioned as he left Marvel for their rival, but some of the new gods from the series live on in the DC universe. He went back to Marvel in the 1970s, and he worked on Captain America, Black Panther, among others. I think one of the most interesting things he did in the 1970s, though, had to do with Argo and the Canadian caper. If you're familiar with the movie Argo, the very, very short version of this story is, in 1979, the Iranian government was toppled, the U.S. embassy was stormed, and all the Americans in it were taken hostage. There were some Americans who were hiding out in other places, trying not to be captured and held hostage, and there was a bold rescue effort by some people from the CIA. As I said, artists have been utilized in all sorts of interesting ways. What happened was the CIA created these false documents, um, passports, and things like that to create the illusion that some of their operatives were film scouts from Hollywood trying to scout locations for a new movie they were going to create called Argo. Jack Kirby was instrumental in this misdirection as he created concept art for the non-existent movie. The whole thing was an amazing, dramatic rescue, and it actually worked. And once again, figures drawn from Jack Kirby's imagination helped to save real lives. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.